One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And I don't know about you guys, but after the 2019 NFL draft, it almost feels like the Jags have a whole new team and that also might be because the Jags have been adding a lot of depth on the defensive side of the ball through free agency specifically the linebacker position and that's something we will be talking about a little bit in this video talking about Telvin Smith what about his whereabouts and where he really stands uh, at with the team as of now and again I don't have that information no one has that information I'm not going to speculate but we're going to talk about the situation if Telvin Smith is not on the squad as well and we're going to factor in some of the 2019 NFL draft class in fact we're going to factor all of them because ladies and gentlemen this is what is the over and under for wins for the Jaguars in 2019 post NFL draft now let's talk about the offensive side of the ball first obviously still Nick Foles is the quarterback and is going to be the starting quarterback heading into the 2019 season and I still stand with where I stood on him when I previously made this video about one or two months ago, that it all depends on what Nick Foles shows up, on how successful this Jaguar team as a whole and this Jaguar offense is going to be. And this is the consistent Nick Foles that tends to show up towards the latter part of the regular season and the playoffs. I think the Jags are going to be just fine if Nick Foles can put up those numbers, be consistent. He doesn't have to be a big-time passer. Uh, to in order for this offense to be successful he just has to be better than Blake Bortles you know there's a lot of people including myself in 2018 we talked about how we are a quarterback away if we had one quarterback everything would change that and this is what we're gonna see if those fans and myself are correct you know how much did Blake Bortles actually hold this team back you know and then injuries as well that's something that we often forget about 2018 as we were riddled with injuries week in and week out yes we would take losses and yes Blake Bortles was basically the scapegoat for a lot of those losses but the offensive line was hurt these wide receivers were hurt our number one wide receiver Marquise Lee torn uh, Achilles week you know in the preseason he's out for the entire season we had to do without him you know Keelan Cole regressed hard and you know, there's just a ton of injuries on the offensive line specifically, and that's what we're going to be talking about next is this offensive line with the addition of Jaywan Taylor. Jaywan Taylor is going to make this offensive line a hell of a lot better than it was midway through 2019 and towards the end of 2019. I still think this offensive line is one of the strong suits for the Jags. Even in 2018, I thought that they were just operating with a literal skeleton crew on the offensive line due to injuries. Brandon Linder, Cam Robinson, Andrew Norwell, all of them injured. All of them could not play a factor uh, for the rest of the year in 2018. Blake Bortles was getting hit every time he dropped back to pass. But this year, if this offensive line can stay healthy, it's going to be the brightest spot on this Jaguar offense. For sure, no doubt about it. you got Brandon Linder holding it down at the center position, which he has done a terrific job at. No reason to doubt him. Andrew Norwell, who we made the highest paid guard. Uh, last free agency he's going to be coming back healthy we got AJ can slotted in at the other guard position we also got uh, Cam Robinson holding down the left tackle position and at the right tackle it's going to be a battle between J1 Taylor and Will Richardson we're going to see what this Will Richardson kid is all about because that was the guy that we have been talking about basically all you know off season so far is is Will Richardson for real? Is this guy going to be good enough to be our starting right tackle? Well, if he's not, we got a great insurance policy with J. Juan Taylor. And J. Juan Taylor, obviously, was the better prospect coming out of his draft class and probably will earn the starting job at the right tackle spot over Will Richardson, as he should. And this offensive line should be able to protect Nick Foles, give him the time he needs to make accurate passes, to get rid of the football, and everything should be all right with the Jaguars in the passing game from the offensive line perspective and the quarterback perspective. Now let's talk about the wide receivers and the tight ends a little bit. There's a lot of people that feel really, really passionate that the Jags should have drafted a wide receiver in the draft. And I am not disagreeing with you. I think instead of taking a running back uh, like we did with Raquel Armstead, 
I think they probably should have tried to target a wide receiver. Even DK Metcalf in the third round, I don't think would have been a bad choice. They also had opportunities to get guys like Hakeem Butler, but they didn't. And Dave Caldwell in this front office as a whole in this coaching staff feels really comfortable with the wide receivers they have. And maybe they should, you know, but maybe they shouldn't at the same time. You know, our number one wide receiver, you know, heading into next year, who's supposed to be Dede Westbrook. He's never been a number one wide receiver in his life, other than in college, obviously. And then you have, you know, Marquise Lee holding it down. And Marquise Lee was consistently pretty average, pretty all right for the Jags at the wide receiver position. So, you know, we're really going to see how much of a difference he actually makes. You know, see if the Jags made a mistake going the cheap route and, you know, re-signing Marquise Lee instead of trying to extend uh, Allen Robinson. You know, we'll see how that pans out. He'll have a full season in him next year. Chris Conley, who I think is going to be a very key acquisition for the Jaguars. He already has good chemistry with Nick Foles. And this this duo should be able to produce together and should be able to do really, really good things. He's going to be an X factor. And you got guys like DJ Chark. Chark had to play with Blake Bortles his first season. You know, he kind of struggled. But it wasn't all necessarily Blake's fault. He did have a couple of drops. But he's in year number two. Maybe he takes that next step to be a better wide receiver to help out Nick Foles. So this wide receiver situation, though it doesn't look great on paper, I think it comes down to scheme, guys. And I think these wide receivers are what's best for the Jaguars scheme heading into 2019. So I completely understand that, that these guys are scheme guys. None of them are really an electrifying number one wide receiver, but they all fit the scheme and they're going to be able to do what they need to do in order for us to win games. And lastly, we're going to be talking about the running backs. The Jags have a ton of running backs heading into 2019. You got Leonard Fournette, you got Thomas Rawls, you got Alfred Blue, you got Raquel Armstead. And, you know, I think there's another one Am I missing somebody? I might be missing somebody, but that's just four. Benny Cunningham, that's five, you know, off the top. So there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be getting cut, but there's going to be three guys that are going to be making this roster and who they are, I'm not so sure. I think the front office really likes for Quell Armstead to stay on the roster because if Fournette were to get hurt, he is basically the same caliber of running back as Leonard Fournette. You know, he's a downhill guy and has low-key speed like Leonard Fournette. So, you know, he'll be able to step in. I think he makes a... A roster spot Thomas Rawls probably coming in to be like a receiving back out of the backfield for us but this running back room is going to look a lot different and you know if this is still a run first team and it truly is then this offensive line is going to be blocking very well for Leonard Fournette and hopefully Fournette has really good holes to run through so he can reach his 2017 form and be a tremendous tremendous asset to this Jaguars offense that I think as of now is going to be a pretty solid unit with the exception of the tight end position which we have not touched on I think the tight ends you know they don't really deserve to be touched on because there's not really one guy that stands out and you know it's I don't think any of them are going to help the team I think and then they're not going to hurt the team either but they're not necessarily going to be making a huge impact but I think this offense as a whole if Nick Foles can show up and produce this offensive line is going to be very solid the run game should be solid as well these wide receivers need to be able to catch the ball and Nick Foles needs to be able to return to his elite yes I said it elite form Next up, we're talking defense, and I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the defense. The Jags did a great job addressing the defense in the draft by drafting Josh Allen, and they have a ton of talent all over the field. You know, everybody knows that this is the unit that's going to hold it down, and if they continue to be dominant and they continue to maintain their form, this team is going to be right back in the playoff picture and should be competing for an AFC South title mark my words I think the AFC South is going to be a complete dogfight because I think all four teams have really good defenses so it's going to be a very defensive heavy division so when those defensive when those division matchups happen look for it to be really low scoring one in the trenches defensive type of games and I think the Jags have the best defense in the division I think they have the best defense in football from the secondary to the front four to the linebackers and that's something that we need to talk about we kind of took a while to we took a long time to talk about it kind of in the intro and that is about Telvin Smith I haven't personally put 
a video out about Telvin Smith because I don't know what's going on. No one knows what's going on, and I don't want to falsely accuse him of anything or, you know, make up a story or anything like that. But it's not like Leonard Fournette to just not talk to the teams and the fact that it's voluntary and, you know, he's a guy. He looks up to Paul Pazlesny. You think Paul Pazlesny would miss a voluntary workout? Hell no. Do you think Telvin Smith would miss a voluntary workout? Hell no. You know, in my opinion, there has to be something like personal or deep going on with Telvin Smith right now for him to not even be in contact with the team. Um, I have no worries about it. Uh, The Jags did pick up a lot of linebackers today to kind of maybe fill a void. I don't know what's going on. Maybe some training camp competition. The Jags do need linebackers. So, I mean, that don't let that get overlooked. Like that, we need some linebackers. We need some special teams guys. And that's what they give us. Uh, but to, to replace Telvin Smith, I think that'd be silly. And I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see us trying to trade him. I don't see any bad blood going on. I mean, we gave him his extension. Like he's obviously a part of this franchise and he has been since we drafted him. So I don't see where he would be, you know, feeling some kind of way or feeling anything, anything like that. So I think that Telvin Smith should be all right. This Jaguar defense overall should be all right. It's an elite defense. It's a great group of guys. I have no worries about it. This Jaguar defense shouldn't worry you because it definitely does not worry me. Now, finally, what is the line for wins for the Jaguars in 2019? Last time we said seven was the line. This time I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to say nine. Nine is the line. I think the Jags should have a winning record in 2019 with all the pieces they have to the overall puzzle, and they should be able to put it together and have a tremendous run in 2019, reminiscent of the 2017 season. And you also got to keep in mind the Jags do have the third toughest schedule next year, so that is going to be playing a big factor. They play a lot of perennial playoff teams, and that is going to be a big big deal for the Jags that they win the games that they're supposed to win and they win they just win you know you got to win you got to win inside the division you got to beat the playoff teams you got to beat like the Saints you know all those types of teams in order to make it to the next level and I'm confident the Jags can do that but just to be safe we're going to say the line is at nine wins and that was what is the over under for wins for the Jaguars post draft what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget check links down below as well you can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley also if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video I drop new content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody outworking me them's just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great day